Back to the floods in New South Wales and questions about the management of Warragamba Dam. It's continuing to spill billions of litres of water, making the widespread flooding worse. This week's events have rekindled a long-running debate about the state government's plan to raise the dam wall. Leaked documents obtained by 7.30 have raised concerns about the environmental impact of the project. National Environment reporter Michael Slezak reports with producer Penny Timms. Billions of litres of water spilling over Warragamba Dam and into the homes of those downstream. Sydney's Hawkesbury Nepean Valley has one of the highest flood risks in the country and this week's weather reignited a long-standing debate over what to do about it. This is nature's warning to say you have to take flood mitigation in the Hawkesbury Nepean seriously. New South Wales government's favoured fix is to raise the dam by at least 14 metres, but not for water storage. What we're about is creating airspace and we need that airspace to hold water back in the event of a flood. With the population in Sydney's Hawkesbury Nepean set to double in the next 30 years, finding a fix is imperative. Some experts doubt raising the dam will help. Raising Warragamba Dam would only have had the most minor uh, impact on the current flood. Jamie Pittock thinks reducing the dam's capacity, building desalination plants and rezoning would be smarter. It would be a really good idea for the New South Wales government to think about helping these residents who live in the most flood-prone places uh, to relocate their homes and businesses to higher ground. The dam sits between the Blue Mountains and Sydney. Raising it will allow some flood water that would normally flow over the dam into Western Sydney to be held behind the dam wall. But it's not so simple. Holding it there will intentionally flood parts of the Blue Mountains World Heritage Area, an area internationally renowned for its environment and cultural heritage. For many in Windsor, it's a trade-off they support. Well, for this community, it's a matter of life and death. Local councillor Nathan Zamprogno has had enough and wants his community protected. This week's flooding is the worst seen for 50 years, but modelling and experience shows it can be much worse. If we can ensure against the severity of a, of a bad flood by 75% for under a billion dollars, when you look at a potential damage bill of between seven and ten billion dollars, to me that seems like money well spent. We filmed here before the floods. This isn't the first time the government has tried to raise the dam. New information on the risk of floods in the Hawkesbury Nepean has forced the state government to act. The dam will be higher and wider. In the 1990s, Roger Lambert was hired by the government to help get approval for the project. The impacts he found helped kill the project, and now history could be repeating. These sorts of issues were brought to the attention of the government, and uh, the Carr government decided not to proceed, partly on the basis of the significant environmental impacts that were going to be caused. The mighty Kaumung is a declared wild river. If the new proposal goes ahead, experts fear floodwaters could back up and damage the unique environment. Any inundation longer than about two weeks is likely to have an ecological effect. We shouldn't be building dams full stop in World Heritage areas and we'll be continuing that fight until uh, the World Heritage area is protected in the way it should be. The Gondangara people believe the area is the final resting place for a sacred Dreamtime spirit. Gundangara woman Taylor Clark and her mum Kazane Brown lost their family land when the dam was first built. They're now fighting to stop the new proposal and preserve their history. So is it at risk? Yeah, this is definitely within the impact area. There are thousands of important fragile cultural sites, including scar trees, scattered across the area. The dam wall raising is going to, in some places, cause floods of up to two kilometres inland. Um, the immediate impact of that just one time of flood is enough to destroy these sites. And she worries what that will mean for future generations, their connection to the land and even their identity. I don't think I really felt that real connection until I got into that place. If that's gone, it'll never be real to my kids. It'll never be real to my grandkids. That's where that connection is built. The dam raising project was initially expected to cost about $700 million. 
But on top of that, developers are required to pay money to compensate for or offset environmental damage. Leaked documents obtained by 7.30 show how far the government is going to avoid paying that money. The draft Environmental Impact Statement, or EIS, prepared by an independent ecologist for the government, found extensive damage would be caused to endangered plants and animals in the Blue Mountains. For example, up to half the remaining population of the critically endangered Regent Honeyeater could be killed or displaced. To compensate for the damage, the ecologist estimated the government would have to pay nearly $3 billion in offsets, more than four times the expected construction cost. To avoid that, the government argued that all upstream damage caused by the project should be counted as an indirect impact. But the ecologist penning the EIS wouldn't cop it. Her firm wrote detailed expert advice, concluding that there was no doubt the impacts caused by temporary flooding were direct impacts. But a later draft of the EIS, also obtained by 7.30, shows that definitive advice was ignored and those impacts were listed as indirect. So the whole reason why the impacts on the environment should be considered indirect is because the water is only being held temporarily. It makes no sense whatsoever. It sounds to me like a scientific fraud. The government also pushed back against a range of other findings, urging the independent ecologist to weaken her report, which she resisted. She complained the level of certainty demanded of her findings was unusual and unreasonable. She then quit, and emails obtained by 7.30 show that she was replaced by someone who, until that very week, was working for the government on the dam project itself. I believe that's a conflict of interest, and if I was involved in that circumstance, I think I'd step aside. Why is someone who was trying to get an outcome for Water New South Wales in raising Warragamba Dam Wall, now being put in charge of determining the ecological impacts of this proposal. I'm very confident that the people who have been engaged to provide this information, the um, engagement we've had across multiple government agencies, uh, external consultants, has really been quite a thorough process. The New South Wales government says the issue is lives versus the environment, but that's not how everyone sees it. You've got to balance these things wisely and I don't believe the people that are opposed to this project have done that in, the, in a way that's fair. The reason it's not worth it is because trading off those bits of wilderness um, that we're in at the moment doesn't need to happen. That's the program for tonight. Thanks for your company. Good night.